start with like uh, when I was young, I used to I used to love drawing and painting, uh, and I started uh, drawing number plates because back in the day when there, were, there was no law for the number plates, so there used to be any kind of fonts and style one could use to to the license plates, and I used to I started training with the sign painter, so he's painter Salim from Ahmedabad, uh, with whom. Uh, I used to go train, wash brushes, and then I started lettering. Uh, and then uh, I went and joined the Faculty of Fine Arts in MS University of Baroda, thinking that I would go and become a, a, a better sign painter. But then I figured that the world is bigger, and there's like graphic design and typography, and there are like a lot many things to it. So then after that, I joined uh, Ogilvy and Wyden Kennedy, which is these two advertising agencies. I worked there for almost a decade. And so my world, which was of a sign painter, was something like this, which became like this, which is like a reception of our Wyden Kennedy office. And I started experimenting with typography in a different way. So this is like all the pencils, 23,000 pencils which spells work is worship. Well, it kind of like feels like this. But so while I was doing these kind of works, these beautiful signs on the streets were also disappearing, where these finely paint, hand-painted signs over this. And I, at one point, I wanted to become a sign painter. But then I saw that these signs were kind of fading, and that not many people are interested in sign painting anymore. So this is a typical fruit juice sign in Delhi. You would see like it's a very colorful. It has its own language. But then after digital printing, it looks like this. And it's not only the signs, but like there are everything else around has like a certain kind of aesthetics, which has changed. And it's kind of an explosion of these signs all around us. It is really changing, changed our landscape. So I thought it, this, everybody can call themselves graphic designer if you know Coral Draw and Photoshop and like, you know, it just. So I thought I should do something about it. I started this project called Hand Painted Type, where I commissioned sign painters to design a font, like draw a font on a banner. And then they would, so I commissioned different, different uh, sign painters across. I called my friends, I told them this, that. So there are all of these uh, fonts made by different sign painters from different parts of India. And all it has is, is the Indianness. It has like, it has a kind of a font which is designed by Indian with kind of our, you know, the aesthetics, the color quality, the sense. Most of the fonts we use are actually designed by people not from India, but from outside. It has a very different kind of aesthetic. So I thought we should do something to preserve this aesthetic quality of Indian sign painting. This is a fruit juice typeface. Uh, and these are all various. And I also commissioned some painters to do local languages, like Devanagari and Urdu and other languages, to see you know, what, what kind of results we get from it. So these are all the results from, from the project. This project I started in 2011. So I have been kind of like still working on it, or uh, like on and off, on and off on it. Uh, so the idea was to like first get this, and then to digitize it like layer by layer, like how a font has bold and italic and light and things like that. The same way I have like this shadows and highlights and things. So I kind of have this font in like nine layers. It's called Painter Kafil, and this is this is how the font looks like when you put everything together. And it has like a very specific quality of this. It's kind of like coming from the same family. One can change colors. One can do play around with it. So it becomes like a like a like for people to play and experiment with. At the same time, it also retains the quality. Well, when we make this font, the painter also gets a royalty out of it. So the idea is that painter gets a royalty and he gets some income while we also get to play with it and. So there are many fonts which we digitized from the project. This is called Painter Umesh. It's like a, this is a free font. All of this is on handpaintedtype.com. You can go and I haven't updated the science site since 2012, but it still functions. You can put your email ID and get these fonts. Uh, but then kind of like fonts started becoming more and more popular over the time. And there are like a lot many people have started using it. So while I was working on something which is kind of going down. At the same time, I was also more interested in doing something which is 
coming up and that was graffiti. So I, so there was always a sign painter in me who wanted to go out and paint. So I started experimenting on the street, going out and doing some more graffiti. And it was like really good with a lot of adrenaline and I could do like, you know, whatever I want and this pure vandalism on the streets of Delhi. But this a while we used to do vandalism, there always used to be cops after our life. So in 2014, we decided to like kind of make it more legal and we approached Delhi police headquarters and said, can we make a portrait of Mahatma Gandhi? Well, obviously, a police cannot say no to Gandhi because every police station has a Gandhi portrait. So they agreed and we made, we invited a German artist. Uh, his name is Hendrik ECB. And we painted this uh, portrait. The idea of this wall was to make sure that the government looks at the wall in a different way. Everyone kind of like, you know, see what's the potential behind wall. And soon after we did this project in Tihar jail, which is a one kilometer long boundary of a jail where we have written a poem by one of the female prisoners of the jail where, which says, Char Diwari, where it talks about how all, all of us always surrounded by four walls. And so it kind of made the whole jail boundary look a little bit okay because there are also a lot of people who live around the jail. So it kind of like helped us break that stigma of a jail and made, uh, made a jail a little bit of better, at least from the outside. And so by the end of this 2014, we, all five of us came together. That's Akshat, that's me, that's Julia, that's Tanish and Arjun. We formed a foundation called START, which is basically a street and art put together. It's called START. And we started working again. Now, Hendrik never made any popular portrait before he made Gandhi. Uh, and we requested that if you come and do this, paint a Gandhi, this can open up a different landscape. And if you do this, we will invite you for another time to do something what you would like. So Hendrik came and Hendrik painted this portrait of a lady. Her name is Lavanya. She's a tea seller. She makes paratha opposite this wall. This wall is in Lodi Colony. Lodi Colony is a unique structure in New Delhi, which is like this grid-like structure. It's all like, always like all roads, squares next to each other. It's a perfect, like this is how Lodi Colony looked like. And we thought this colony had potential to become India's first public art district. So we said, yeah, let's change from Lodi Colony. So we started working. We invited like a lot of our friends and a lot of artists. In 2016, we started painting here. And this is one of the work in progress pictures from the colony. And now Lodi Colony looks something like this, where there are artworks by various artists from all over the world. And each artwork has its own story to tell. Uh, it's almost uh, a two hour walk one could one could do to uh, and there are 50 artworks in the Lodi colony now uh, last month we officially launched Lodi colony like kind of changed from Lodi colony to Lodi art district with the CPWD which is the central public's work department so these are all different artworks by different artists in the colony the format is same the wall is same the, the, and this is a colony was built by British in 1940s. It has enough space and room and to walk around. So yeah, this is how this colony looks now. And at the same time, we are also doing, so this is the map of the colony. So this has 50 artworks now. And it's like, it is like now India's first public art district. At the same time, we are also working in Bombay with, his, with Mahim East Art District, which is the one end of Dharavi. We don't call it Dharavi, we call it Mahim East. There's no place called Mahim East, but if you search Mahim East, then probably you reach only this spot. So uh, this is an Australian artist called Guido Van Helton. He started working and he started, like, he started painting these b-boys on the wall. So this is one of the like, first artwork which came up in the art district uh, in Bombay, in the landscape. Similarly, if you walk inside, you'll find more, more walls. And even this, as an art district, we have been building for a while now. So the all, again, local, outside India, within India, they all, all these artists are kind of 
painting and these are all the works you can see. Do you guys know where Makta Art District is? Yes, it's in Hyderabad. This is next. This is another art district which we are building in Hyderabad. It's, it's next to uh, Necklace Road, next to the Park Hotel. There's a, uh, a small neighborhood. This is how Makta looked like before. And we we saw potential in doing something in Makta, so we started kind of painting in Makta. And once you <clears throat> walk in Makta, you will find you'll kind of like see these artworks from here and there. And you, it this is by a French artist called. Jean-Luc, uh, this is the first time he painted. But at the same time, this is on the periphery. There's a people plaza on the other side, and on, on, on the left-hand side is, uh, is Makta. So all these artists, uh, this is Swati and Vijay from Hyderabad. You know. you know, so these artworks, so as we speak right now, somebody's painting in Makta, and we are like, we have been painting in Makta for almost two, three years now. These are some of the artworks from Makta. We also color coded Makta, so like the one is like a blue lane, well on the other side, so there are this green and yellow and all these kind of things. So the whole idea is to kind of like, so far we have been to like 10 cities, we have like have 500 artworks, 100 artists from 25 countries, and we kind of like continue to grow and kind of change India, because we think art works as a more of a relief in these growing Indian cities, because we're growing at a, such a, large speed that we're building flyovers and this and then everything is gray, but there's no relief and I think it is important to, to do that. So when you search Lodi Colony back then, these are the kind of results you would get. And now if you search Lodi Colony, this is what you would get. The same thing's gonna happen with Makta and Mahim East as well. So yeah, we're just changing perception, kind of making residential colonies, making look like an art, look like an art district. And if you do this, then Google would also show you all these what people are searching. And it's pretty popular for the pre-shoot wedding as well, like pre-wedding shoot as well. So, it's, so that's good to know. At the same time, Lodi Colony is also popular for all these dignitaries. This is the first lady of France. This is Macron. She's like, she visits, or like, you know, Tridav, or like whoever kind of comes and visits the colony. While the colony has kind of changed a lot, it has also like have a different effect on, on its residents and neighbors. That kid in the middle, his name is Deepak. And on the left, what you see is the artist version of like Deepak doing something. But what it has done is it has changed Deepak's perception of art and what he could like, you know, what one could visualize. And I, I wish that when I was young, I could like probably witness something like this and that would have really changed my vision or something. But at least now, there's not only Deepak, but there are hundreds of these kids in the colony whose vision is changing. They're really looking at art differently, and for them it's possible. It is possible to do, while before that there was no, no such thing. So that's our kind of idea to make sure that art reaches, art goes beyond the museums and galleries and everyone kind of like, and that's why we make art for all. And that's, this is what our motto, and that's what we work for. In a, in a pure non-profit way. And I, I think we need to reclaim our streets from all of these ads and things around us which we never question. Like we go out and you see Coca-Cola, you never, never question why there's Coca-Cola here. But it's there and you accept it at the same time. So we need to like kind of reclaim our streets from, from these advertisers and everything else around it. And I want to like leave with this last slide, which we did in, in Hyderabad last, uh, yeah, two years ago. It's a kind of series of hoarding campaigns we did. Yeah, and this is where I would like to end. Thank you so much.